Think about how many times that you've been asked the following question, how old are you? This seems to be one of the most common questions uh, asked to people uh, who fit the AOP category of young people uh, under 35. Right, right along with questions relating to your work or your school, your marital status, or where you go to college. Sometimes people that ask this question to see whether or not you are mature uh, beyond your age or immature for your age. I've faced this in my professional career as an assistant manager uh, at an indoor theme park. And one of my roles as a manager was to interact with guests and to, uh, to resolve issues as they arose. And when I would arrive at a situation, uh, sometimes they immediately would question whether I'm a manager or not uh, and would ask for other managers or someone higher than me. Just some free advice, a beard does not make you look older. <laughs> Uh, they, they can't see a 24-year-old as a manager. Uh, they, they sometimes don't uh, even give me a chance, but I have to stand my ground. I have to uh, be mature and be, be calm during any situation. And you've probably faced disrespect over your age as well. Anything you do in life, whether in ministry or a regular job, people will look down upon you for your age. My prayer today is that God will encourage me and you today uh, to persevere as young preachers in a world that continues to despise youth. The need for today's sermon is, uh, in, is, is encouragement, and Paul is writing to Timothy uh, and encouraging uh, those of us in ministry uh, who are, uh, are young to keep pressing forward uh, and to point others to Christ and not our age. You see, the message is also for adults who look down upon youth and young people and uh, don't respect their God-given positions. This is a message that Timothy needed to hear long ago, and we still need to hear today. Paul wrote the letter to Timothy while he was in Macedonia, and where he instructed to, uh, Timothy to address the issues uh, within the church. And this is a beautiful example of how God shows us through the Bible that the same issues Timothy and Paul faced, we still face today. And that brings me to my first point today, is to be an example uh, look at the first part of uh, verse 12, uh, chapter 4. It says, don't let anyone despise your youth. So why does Paul say, don't let anyone despise your youth? Well, Paul is, uh, reminding, er, Paul is telling us that in the Greek culture, uh, great value and emphasis was placed upon age and experience. When Paul wrote this letter to Timothy, he was in his 30s, and he was considered young at the time. And even today, millennials and Generation Z are constantly criticized and despised, and some of it is rightfully so. But most of it is unwarranted, it's false, it's hurtful, unproductive, and irresponsible. My fellow young people, Paul is saying, don't give adults reasons to look down upon you, but listen to them and gain wisdom and knowledge from them, from their stories and their lessons and their experiences. And to the adults, instead of solely criticizing and despising us, correct us provide instruction and counsel and wisdom and teach us and point us to God's word. There are young people in this room like, like who've, who've been in situations where, where they're, they're looked down upon and not respected for their positions. Let me remind you that, that, that God calls us to preach and to teach. God doesn't call the equipped, but he equips the called. Just like Timothy uh, had a mentor uh, in Paul, I had someone who mentored me uh, in my professional career. Uh, Ken uh, is, a, is a great man. He was in his early 50s, uh, and he mentored me, took me under his wings, uh, and helped me uh, to be uh, a, a excellent manager uh, at this facility. And instead of ignoring his advice, instead of uh, acting like I knew what I was doing and had everything figured out, I soaked it in. I, I, I ran with it, and it stuck with me, and I valued his experience and his knowledge. And on December 31st, that was my last evening working for this company. And when I announced my resignation to devote more of myself to ministry and to, to God's work, um, God showed me how much I learned. And I could not believe how many employees I impacted, uh, and, there was, and I was sad to see them, and they were sad to see me go. So how did I do that? I listened to older and wiser people like Ken you see, you find older and wiser people in your congregation, in your workplace, or your school. Observe them. Ask questions. Listen to them. 
and process what you have seen and heard. And if you want to gain respect from adults and have people see Christ and not your age, Paul gives us wisdom in the second part of verse 12. He says, But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. The point is not this. The point is not to find out what older people or adults want and just give it to them. The point is to find out what kinds of words and in conduct God wants from us and to do that. And he gives us love and faith and purity in this passage as examples of what we should do uh, to gain that respect. What Paul is essentially saying is that the way that I want youth to pursue not being despised is to look to God's standards of love and faith and purity. In that way, even young people can become examples to older people. He gives us five ways for us to be the example. Number one is word. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only as such as good for building up as it fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Ephesians 4.29. You see, we all struggle with this. We all struggle with, uh, with words, whether we want to admit it or not. We have to be constantly alert and thinking about the words that are coming out of our mouth. Just like toothpaste, once it's squeezed out of the tube, it cannot be put back into the tube. Once words come out of our mouth, they cannot be put back in. Number two is conduct. Conduct yourselves honorably among the Gentiles, so that when they slander you as evildoers, they will observe your good works and, and uh, glorify God. Think about, how many t- how we, think about how we act in public, how we act in our church, how we act in our school, in our workplace. Are we being Christ-like? Are we being mature and respectful? Or are we being childish and rude? Number three is to love. If we have the true love of God shed abroad in our hearts, we will show it in our lives. We will not have to go up and down the earth proclaiming it. We will show it in everything we say or do. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other command greater than these. Number four is faith. The late Billy Graham painted the picture, I have never been to the North Pole, and yet I believe there is a North Pole. How do I know? I know because someone told me. I read about it in a history book. I saw it on a map in a geography book. And I believe the men and women who wrote those books, and I accept it by faith. And he quotes Romans 10:17. So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the message about Christ. And lastly, number five is purity. What does Paul mean by this? Therefore, put to death what belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. And he also says, for this uh, is God's will, your sanctification that you keep away from sexual immorality, that each of you knows how to control his own body in holiness and in honor, not with lustful passions, and like the Gentiles who don't know God. Just to recap, set an example in your speech, in your conduct, in your love, in your faith, and in your purity. And this brings me to my second point, to look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. First, first part of verse 16 says, pay close attention to your life and teaching. One of my many responsibilities as a manager was to pay close attention to my fellow employees and ensure they're following our safety standards and procedures and, and policies and giving our guests the best experience possible. I can't tell you how many times when I wasn't paying close attention, when I was preoccupied with another situation, that they would fall into those bad habits. When you get up in the morning and get ready, you look into the mirror. You fix your hair, you brush your teeth, you examine yourself to make sure you're looking good today. Can you imagine if we forget to do this several times a week? We'd be a mess. If we aren't constantly self-examining our spiritual lives and evaluating our teaching, we can slip into the schemes of the devil and drift away. Christian rap artist Trip Lee said in a sermon, he said, watch what you teach. Every pastor must realize that life and doctrine are inseparable. If either of them are to be effective or honoring to God, it matters not only that you te- what, what that you teach, 
but what you teach. Not only that you live, but how you live. The last part of verse 16 says, Persevere in these things, for in doing so you will save both yourself and your hearers. When Jonathan Edwards was just 19, he made the following resolution. He said, Resolve to study the Scriptures so steadily, constantly, and frequently, so that I may find and plainly perceive myself to grow in the knowledge of the same. And he quotes 2 Peter 3.18, Grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As I conclude today, I want you to, to go back to the question at the beginning. The next time someone asks you the question, how old are you? My prayer is that they will see your mature beyond your age, that they will see your experience and not your age, that they will hear the words that you speak and not your age. They will see your conduct and not your age. They will see your love for God and others and not your age. They will see your faith and not your age. They will see your purity and not your age. They will see your life and teachings and not your age. And they will see the love, grace, and mercy and peace of Jesus Christ and not your age. Amen.